every single week, Lady to user powers and engineering to help you find what you're looking for or things that you don't even know you're looking for yet on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search of the week this week? Okay, so this week I'm going to be interfacing to this Apple II disk drive, which is in a beautiful, clear enclosure. That's cool. Um, and the Apple II disk drive has a slightly different uh, control mechanism for how you um, control the drive and read and write from it. And it has this analog board. And the analog board um, has, hold on. Yeah, so you won't go to my computer, so I can show the yeah. schematics. So this is the schematic for the analog board, the disk interface. And you'll see it has um, a negative 12 volt power supply. So it has plus 12, uh, there's VCC, which is five volts, and negative 12. Um, and that's a little unusual. Well, I mean, it, at the time it wasn't unusual because uh, transformer-based power supply is really easy to split the tap and then you can generate a negative voltage. But with digital electronics, we don't tend to have negative power supply rails really as much. Um, so the good news is that, you know, most disk drives that I'm used to working with, so here's the, the five volt supply. You know, your five volt supply and the 10 volt supply are used for logic and there's a stepper motor, probably that's the 12 volt. And then there's a spinning motor, probably either 12 volt or five volt. So the 12 volt and five volt supplies um, are high current. They're going to be like an amp or two because you're going to drive a motor with them and um, a lot of these logic chips. The um, negative 12 volt supply, however, let me find it, is used for a bias. Hold on. I have like 500 images and they're all blurry. Okay. So this is where the negative uh, 12 volt supply is. It's right here. And it's used as part of this analog circuitry, which um, filters uh, the pulses or like biases the, the read head. I'm actually not 100% sure. I have to look up what the MC3470 does. But this is the only place that the negative 12 volt appears. So, you know, it, the, the potentiometer R28, and, um, you know, I looked on this uh, boards look at R28. And R28 is not, it looks like, you know, you, you tweak and adjust it to set uh, uh, the, it looks like the, the, the jitter, adjust the jitter for um, the analog board. So here, this is the, the tech instructions for this board and they say, okay, you know, look at this uh, trigger pulse. I guess this is maybe the bias for the trigger um, where, where like, you know, it, it uh, it, uh, there's some timer and then it like reads the timer and it uses the pulses to like generate the pulse train or synchronize with the pulse train that comes out of the diskette. Um, so there's a potentiometer that you have to adjust. So you do need to give it that negative 12 volts, um, especially, you know, you'll get weird results. If not, maybe you'll not get some, some good reading results. Um, you might get errors on right. So you do want to have a negative voltage and you want to have that voltage at least be, um, consistent. So we have to generate a negative 12 volts. And again, for digital electronics, you know, it's, we've done boost converters and we've done linear regulators. So you can like kind of move up and you can move down and you can use buck converters. But now I want an inverter. And um, I'm extremely lazy about this inverter because it's not a power supply. It's like a bias supply. I don't need an amp of negative 12 volts. If I did, I would actually probably get a custom power supply to do that um, or, or put in a big, um, you know, boost converter, buck converter that does inversion. If I only need, you know, a couple milliamps because it's a 10K uh, potentiometer, I'm going to look for a charge pump inverter. And charge pump inverters, um, the reason I'm a, a fan of them is because uh, if you remember your Max 232, um, you know, this is a, a kind of a famous part, not not used as much anymore, but was um, famous for if you had an RS-232 interface, which all electronics used to, you would use this and it would convert your five volt logic or there's a version for three volt logic. And it would do this neat thing where it, it, it was like, hey, since it's not a power supply that you need negative 10 and plus 10, but you just need it for biasing, for signaling, not for powering. It would, uh, there was a built-in charge cap. You would put some, you know, one microfarad caps on the outside. It would convert the five volt to 10 volt and then do an inverter to get you 10 volt to negative volt. So one, I could probably get away with using a max 232, but I kind of want to not cheat and use a, a chip that isn't designed for it. 
Uh, and second, I might actually need negative 12. Uh, I want it to maybe be perfectly balanced. So, um, so this was actually kind of interesting because uh, I wasn't actually sure how to find this because you know it's it's a it's a weird part. Um, but I think I searched for um, it's under regulators, so it's a, it's considered a DC DC switching regulator. And um, it's actually called ratio metric, which makes sense because you're not regulating it, you're just flipping it over. Um, so let's look for active uh, ratio metric or inverted, because you can also get um, inductor based uh, converters. We want only one output, um, and we want to make sure it can give you negative. Hold on, positive or negative. Well, I'll just say positive and negative. And voltage input max. Wait, I messed something up. Let me start over. This got this was very confusing. So hold on. I want right, so I want uh, negative. I'm gonna have to go back from the part that I found and then and then uh, go backwards. So positive or negative, one output, voltage input max. Okay, so for voltage input max, because I want to generate 12 volts, I need it to be able to take at least 12 volts. So I'm going to select all of these. And let's see what I get. And then I don't care about adjustable or fixed because I can I can tweak that. And yeah, I got a bunch of these parts and then I did surface mount only because it turns out those are a lot of through hole parts. And a lot of things were out of stock. So the first thing I found was there is um, this very popular part that's been used for a very long time called the IC ISL or ICL. 766X, and there were quite a few of these, um, and these are ancient. Um, these, these have been made since the beginning of time. Um, so you can use this part, most likely, um, and there's, there comes in a, like a lot of different uh, manufacturers. It's kind of a jelly bean part. So if you search for, let me open up a new page. You look for ICL 766 to get all the, um, all the alternatives under the switching regulators. Yeah, you'll see, so this was made by like Analog Maxim, by Harris, by Renaissance. So lots of, lots of, different, lots of different options. Um, came in DIP and also SMT. So this is one uh, version. There's also the 7662. So there was this whole family. However, I wanted um, another alternative because this was a little bit of an older chip and and there were a couple available um but it's sort of i was like a little i was a little anxious about it so the other one i found actually was the um tc1044 and this actually there's also the tc1054 one second Why is this under linear regulators? Hold on. Let me look at my history. This was, sorry, the LT 1054. Okay, so the um, LT 1054 was a different charge pump inverter. Uh, so this was available from TI and Analog, and um, the good news is this one was a little bit less expensive, but it came in a um, 16 SOIC, so it's much, much larger, but it's a much more modern chip, and the pricing was pretty good. It's basically like a dollar fifty or so, um, and it can do either doubling or or negative, so it's kind of got this like weird voltage output negative VN or or two VN. Um, but the good news is that it could take up to 15 volts input. So this was actually what I ended up um, 
picking for what I think I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to get some of the samples of the ICL 7660, but one thing that's interesting about that part is it's so old that it actually started getting more expensive um, than the modern part. Like, usually you think, like, oh, an old part, like, um, you know, a, a TL, you know, TL074 or something, so, you know, some op amp. If it's, like, a couple of decades old, it'll be really inexpensive because it's made so much. But one thing I've noticed is, like, during the silicon shortage, sometimes there's this, like, weird, like, it's, it's like a, there's, like, a dip where it's, like, very new parts are very expensive because you can't get them. And very, very old parts are very expensive, too, because they're, like, not really made anymore. And so the people who need them are, like, desperate to not, like, you know, you have some, like, mil-spec design and you're not going to change this component. You absolutely need to use this component for the rest of you know, human history, um, so you're desperate to get it. So there's like this nice middle ground where you're actually going to get better pricing on parts that are like about five to ten years old. So um, even though this is a more modern part, it actually ended up being less expensive than um, the ICL, which was like for some reason like five dollars, <laughs> you know, for this this like multi-decade old component. So. The, the ICL uh, probably works really, really well, but I think I'm probably going to go with the LT1054. And I also learned a little bit about um, product history and pricing, I think, along the way. But what's actually kind of fascinating is there's, there's a lot of boost converter, like the charge pump inverters for 5 volts. But once you get to 12 volts, it's actually kind of a little, it's a little rarer. Um, but this one should absolutely do the job quite nicely. And uh I'll pick it up, and it's a bit chunky at 16 SOIC, but sizing is not as important. Um, there's also a Maxim part that I saw that goes up to uh, plus or minus 40 volts and a TDFN, much more expensive. But if you need to generate like a negative 60 volt bias, um, the Maxim part will do the job as well. And that is the Great Church.